I call the honourable member, Dr. David Clark. Mr. Speaker, uh, that member needs to table the agreement that will come into effect in July this year. It is a, an agreement that has been negotiated behind closed doors. That is proper uh, in the, in the uh, negotiation process. Um, the government has been very slow to finalise the agreement, and that is why we are being asked, as a parliament, to ratify an intergovernmental agreement we have yet to see. Now, I have reason to believe that the Minister has seen the agreement, that the agreement has passed now a stage uh, where it is in its final text, and it is the Cabinet to sign it off. Now, the Minister claims he has not seen it. He may be the only person in the Cabinet who has been kept in the dark, but I doubt it very much. Uh, I challenge the Minister to table that document before this legislation is passed. The transparency uh, is a very important principle, and this government, unfortunately, has a bad track record on transparency. We know that with the Sky City deal. Uh, we know that with the conversations around extra payments to Chorus. We know that uh, with the matter of Oravida, and there are plenty more, Mr Speaker. But here, where the agreement has been negotiated and is awaiting Cabinet approval, uh, it is incumbent upon the Minister to put it into the House so that we can have a look at the agreement, so that we can see whether the text has been well negotiated, because it is very unusual. And officials noted this. Officials noted this uh, when we interviewed them in select committee. They, they said it was very unusual for a select committee to be enab passing enabling legislation before the uh, negotiated document had been uh, tabled. This is very, very unusual behaviour. And, and that member uh, opposite, I think, said it was going to be tabled tomorrow. Was that? Ask him in the committee tomorrow, he says. Well, that is promising. I, I wish uh, the member to do it sooner. Uh, the member's never seen it before, but he's confident that uh, tomorrow it may be available to be released, uh, having been challenged. Now, I think that that indicates a certain defensiveness, and it is a great shame that the member couldn't come clean first off and uh, table a document in the House, because this is not the way this process should be done. It should not be the case that the cart comes before the House, that the Parliament is asked not to scrutinise the negotiated legislation, uh, that the Parliament is asked simply to swish it through and wait and see what happens. That is not why the Parliament is here. The Parliament is here to properly examine such agreements. This agreement, the FATCA uh, legislation, um, affects 20,000 New Zealanders uh, who were born in the US, who have, as we understand, no further relationship with the USA. It affects those New Zealanders who have lived and worked in the USA. And, and more broadly, it will affect their families, whose bank account details uh, will be released along with those US citizens back to the United States. And these people are giving up on their privacy by virtue of this legislation that is being passed through the House. That is one thing that we can be pretty confident of, having not even yet seen the text. But this government doesn't seem to take seriously those matters of privacy uh, and the matter of an international negotiation being properly ratified through this parliament through the normal processes. Instead, we have a very unusual process through the House right now. Uh, that the uh, Labor government stands for reciprocity in tax agreements. We do want to crack down on tax avoidance and tax evasion. That government across there has a very poor record in that regard. We know, for example, that Google declares less than 5 per cent of its revenues out of New Zealand for tax purposes, and yet they do nothing about it. We know that Facebook pays less tax than many, many, many members in this House despite having 2.2 million users in New Zealand, which it values, according to its IPO, uh, uh, much more highly, and says that it, if, if it was a New Zealand-based company, based on its IPO of 2012, it would be paying roughly 100 times as much tax in New Zealand if it was a responsible uh, tax-paying organisation based here. Now, these questions are of little concern to that government across there. It seems much more interested in swathes of rhetoric around beneficiaries uh, than in actually chasing the huge uh, tax avoidance problem that we have. It says we'll get into the, the, the multinational process, the BEPS process. You wait, Mr Goldsmith will pop up in a minute and defend the OECD process, whilst the US unilaterally goes out and makes New Zealanders pay for banks to collect data 
on their own people to send the data across to the USA. Uh, that is what uh, this government will get up and defend in a minute. Now, the reason that we might enter into such an agreement is because the US has unilaterally said it will charge 30 per cent extra on wholesale lending if New Zealand doesn't comply. And we may end up in that space. But it's incumbent upon us in a negotiation to put our side of the case, which is reciprocity. It is actually about making sure that tax avoidance is tackled wherever it falls in the world, not just uh, where it's in the US advantage to tackle it, but also where it's in New Zealand's advantage to tackle tax avoidance. But this government uh, will not do that. In select committee, they blocked, they blocked putting the principle of reciprocity in the legislation. Mr Goldsmith will tell you uh, when he gets up that there was good reason for not wanting reciprocity written into the agreement, I'm sure. We've yet to hear a plausible explanation as to why the government doesn't want us to go after tax avoiders in New Zealand in the way it's asking us to go after US tax avoiders at our own cost. Uh, but there must be a reason there somewhere. Perhaps it's just the embarrassment of the government that it's left this negotiation too late. It's happened too slowly. The officials clearly haven't had the guidance that, or the leadership that they should have from this government because they're very competent officials. I know that from having dealt with them previously. The, the fault rests with the leadership of this government and its failure to set down a set of expectations around reducing tax avoidance and tax evasion. And many New Zealanders uh, will be feeling uncomfortable with this change and with the fact that here we are putting the cart before the horse, not negotiate, not scrutinising properly the legislation that is being passed through this House. This government uh, does have a record of being uh, slap happy with respect of uh, agreements. I've already mentioned the Sky City Casino deal. Uh, we know the Aravida one and their support partners. We can think of uh, uh, a matter before the courts currently where there seems to have been a slap happy arrangement uh, in respect of the way in which financial issues are treated. This cuts the core of these these people opposite who are concerned uh, about the corporate interest and not concerned about putting people first. We on this side of the House, the Labor Party, have a view that New Zealand ought to have a fairer tax system. Everybody ought to pay their fair share, and that is so that we can have the schools, the hospitals, uh, the roads, and the safe society and courts that give us uh, a good society. The, the New Zealand that we all know and love from previous generations where there's high trust where we have a social safety net and so forth. But across the way, they're content to, to see things slip, content to see things go in the interests of uh, the big players, uh, content to buckle under pressure and to have the parliament do some very unusual things, Mr Goldsmith, some very unusual things in passing legislation that is not properly scrutinised by the parliament. Now, I also should note, uh, Mr Speaker, that there is around uh, $8 billion in outstanding debt uh, that this government is unable to chase, and uh, they were reluctant to write it off, probably because it came down to part of their budget balancing exercise. Um, they're, they're tinkering here with some other things in this legislation which are positive. Uh, we will actually, in the end, we will support this legislation because we know there are some positive measures in it, uh, but we are deeply concerned about the process and the way it has been done. Uh, we, we would not want to see the banks put in a difficult position where they have to pay 30 per cent uh, withholding tax because this government hadn't got round to doing its homework uh, and hadn't got round to sorting this matter out long ago. So, Mr Speaker, uh, we'd also like to draw attention to the, um, the, the challenges around community housing entities. The Minister will have wide-ranging discretionary powers to approve or disapprove of charitable exemptions as a result of this legislation. This delegation to the, to the Minister of the effective, the effective right to confer lower taxes on some but not all taxpayers is just simply bad law. It is quite, quite simply put terrible law uh, where the Minister has such wide ranging discretionary powers to, to say you pay a lower tax rate than, than this person over here, Mr Speaker. It's been a rushed process. That's why we have ended up with this sloppy law. Uh, the Government put out uh, these changes for consultation uh, around Christmas time and expected people to get back in early February. It was a rushed process. They tried to bury this. It, it shows where we end up when we have bad processes. We end up with bad law. The useful stuff in this law is forcing us to support it, but overall we're very disappointed with the process because the law could be so much better. The, uh, the problems also could be ironed out around um, 
exemptions uh, that KPMG drew to the attention of the committee, um, the taxable nature of an, uh, an employer provided allowance or benefits such as accommodation. We heard countless examples of exemptions in that area. Again, Mr Speaker, uh, sloppy law being made that will require tidying up later. Again. I call the honourable member Paul Goldsmith. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I um, rise to speak on this, the taxation annual rates, employee allowances and remedial.